Hi everybody, welcome to another video. In today's video I thought we'd do some composing. It's a very rough video so I thought I'd have a look at some compositional techniques out there and compose a sketch not a big piece of music. I don't think I'll have long in this sort of video to do anything more than just a sketch. So I thought today what we would explore is Peter Maxwell Davies' use of magic squares. I'll make a magic square and write a little sketch of something. I don't know what instrument yet. I think I'm, I'm going towards clarinet more. First things first, what we need to do is make a magic square. Let's just get into it and see what happens. And you know, maybe I'll develop a composition out of this, who knows. I'm going to use Word. With Maxwell Davis he makes a, a magic square and you can have it like, I think he has his 9x9. Nine nine. You can have it anything by anything. We could do 5x5. Five I've five. got a 5x5 five five table here. It looks terrible. So each row is a transposition of the preceding one. So when we do line 2 it will be a transposition of line 1. So where does he get his initial pitches from? I don't know, I want to go A. Let's see, pick a note, pick a note. G, D, E. Here we have our, our pictures, first starting pictures. We have our square, we have our first picture. So let's transpose up the second line. B would be up here. He moves it on like a conveyor belt. So B up a tone, C sharp. So we put C sharp here. And then A up a tone is B. G up a tone would be A. D up a tone, one, two, three, is E. And E up a tone would be F sharp. So we've got some sharps introduced to the square now. And then the next one, maybe we would go up, I don't know, a fifth. So F sharp would go up to C sharp, C sharp would go up to G sharp. I think ultimately it doesn't really matter, it's just a means of generating compositional material and if you mess it up, I mean, it wouldn't be technically Peter Maxwell Davies's method or the magic square, but it would still be a valid way of generating compositional material for you to compose with. It's just a means of combating writer's block, I think. Or doing something you wouldn't have done otherwise. So it's F sharp. And then A up A fifth would be E, E. I don't know if I'm doing this completely right. And then E up a fifth would be, are things supposed to repeat like this? Have I just done this by mistake? So we've gone up a second, we've gone up a fifth. Let's go up A and minor third. That's four semitones. So B up four semitones would be one, two, three, four, it would be D. Ooh, should we go up a semitone? Because that would introduce a lot more sharps. Yeah, let's go up a semitone. It's easier, isn't it? D sharp is easy. E, F, B, C, A, A sharp. So we've got a few more sharps added in. We've got a lot of repeated notes. Anyway, so we have our pictures for the magic square. Now let's have a look at the durations. What Pete Maxwell Davis does, he's got nine numbers, but we have five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got five, five by five, five notes in the row, five notes in each column. So we need to distribute these five numbers here into the square and we need to make sure we do this in a way that's kind not arbitrary but spread out so it doesn't go one two three four, it doesn't go in an order i want to intersperse it as sort of evenly as possible so the way he does that is he has nine numbers and he adds five to each number in a modular way so it's like a clock face in order to distribute it i'll explain when i do this so we don't have to add five we could add another number like three I feel like I want to add three to each number. Add three to each number. So what is one add three? Four. So four add three. Four. Ah, uh, but you can't go above five, remember, because we've only got five numbers. So four, five, one, two. We go back to two. Two add three. Three, four, five. So it's five. Five add three. We'll go back to one again because it's like a clock first. It's modular. Five add three. Five. One, two, three. We've got three. 3 add 3 is 6, but we can't go 6 because we can't go with 5, so it's 1. And you see what this has done? It's ordered the numbers. It's ordered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this way by adding 3 in a modular way. What does he call it? Modular? Modulus. The row is modulus 3. So here are our numbers, and this is how we distribute them across the square. So how does he do that? So he would add these to the square. So you go A4, G2, D5, E3, B1. And then you've got to add these to the rest of the square. So he, he starts with the second one. So instead of starting at four, he starts with two. Two, keeps the same order though. Five, three, one. And then we go back to beginning four. And then you start with a third number. Five, three, one, four, two. 
And as you can see, these patterns merge. So you've got 2, 2, 5, 5, 5, 3, 3, 3, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4. And then what you notice is these patterns emerge diagonally. So you've got 3, 3, 3 here. And this allows for repeated rhythms. So when you work your way around the square, you can basically do it any way you want. You can have this line, you can go in a spiral, you can go down here, and you could have these notes repeating, these durations. Now, what do the numbers mean in terms of duration? So he would pick something like, say 1 equals a quaver. Just 2 would equals 2 times that, which is a crotchet. 3 would equal a dotted crotchet. 4 would be 4 times a quaver, which would be a minim, yeah? And then 5 would be 5 times that, which would be a minim tag to a quaver. So we've got pitches and durations, so now we can write something. So I'm going to write a piece for clarinet, but I'm going to write it scoring C, just to make it simple, and then transpose at the end. So I'll have it's a minim and it's an A, and I'll just have it here. And then G2 is a crotchet on a G. D5 is a minim tied to a quaver. So we have to do something across the bar line. E3 is E dotted crotchet tied. I think of your rhythmic notation. B1 is B quaver. So here we have our first line. It's an avant-garde piece of music. I should probably have added in that disclaimer. So we just did the first row here. Let's do the second row. C sharp two. So two is a crotchet, of course. Doesn't fit. So we're going to C sharp though. Then. Well, it kind of sounds nice Let's make it look a bit prettier I like a long stem But I think that's a nice phrase actually It's like we've almost got an antecedent consequent within it So I'm going to just keep that as a phrase Kind of. I kind of want to colour it in as well. So let's add in some articulation and dynamics. Maybe these two should be slurred together. No, not tied. Just a slur. And maybe it should start maybe quiet. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Uh, just what I feel. Maybe it should get quite loud at this point. But maybe then get quiet again. Maybe it can just end on an MP. So there's like a kind of a bit of a loud moment coming in. So then we just add in our crescendos and diminuendos. So there we go, we've got like a phrase and we've got some dynamics. Maybe this should be articulated. Oh, uh, should it be, I think we should emphasise it. Accent it. And maybe that should be accented. And then maybe we should have a staccato and then a tenuto. But maybe these two should be slurred together. And then we should have another and then maybe a staccato. Let's listen to that. Ah, oh, you should be sick of this. I like the staccatos. So we've got our first little thing. I don't want to just keep doing the lines because there's so many long notes I think. I want to go like maybe down down here. Do we pause? Yeah let's have a pause because I've done that in a breath. Let's look down. I want to go diagonally down all these one notes. So we have B and it's on a quiver. So we have this thing now. If say one became a, a semi quiver. Two would have to be a quaver. Three would have to be a dotted quaver. Four would have to be a crotchet. Five would have to be a dotted crotchet. And you can do weird things as well, like you could have one like a, a triplet quaver. So maybe in this next time we do the, the square, one equals a semi -quaver. So I can change all that to semi -quaver. So we have this instead. Oh yeah, I like that. So with that was going down this line here. We can go maybe backwards here. 
like this maybe let's try that so we have a sharp three which which would be in this iteration of rhythms a sharp three would be a dotted quaver do i leave a break and then do another one yeah i kind of want to integrate a pause there Okay, I want that to be a staccato. Or maybe I want it to be a staccatissimo. Yeah, let's go for it. And then the accent this one. Let me really go for it. This can be slurred. So close together. Maybe these four can be slurred. And then this can be staccato. That's fine. Dynamic wise, maybe it will start on an MP. And get to an F. And then keep going. I think to an F F F. Add in your hairpins. Some people get really like anal about it and they put F in brackets here, like saying I mean go from this dynamic. I'll do it just to prove a point. So some people prefer you to write in. I find it a bit overkill. I mean it's pretty obvious but so we have one phrase with the second moment after the pause. And I'll do a massive spiral. I'll go where I haven't gone before. I'll go from B and I'll go backwards like that and we'll go down here and I'll go like that so we'll have another, I think we'll have this break I'll just have a, a, a rests here some rests here and we'll go on again for the next phrase so I don't know if we'll have a big pause you can actually alter it as well to suit it so if I wanted to, because I'm composing with this and then I could have a pause bar here so I could alter it just to suit maybe my structure and then I could do that that's too neat for me. I kind of just want to leave it like that. Maybe we'll add a pause if we add in other instruments later on. But I think for now, I will start here and we'll go backwards starting from B1. So we're going to go around backwards, around a spiral to get this final thing, final line. One is a semiquaver. It's not a dotted crotchet, it's a crotchet. Okay, well I've messed this up. It's a crotchet plus a quaver. Ooh, right, so it's a crotchet plus quaver. So every time that five has appeared, it's been different. Well, I'm just gonna stay here. I'm gonna alter it so that now it means this, but before it probably meant dotted crotchet. And I'm gonna leave it, so like here. Oh my God. You know what, it makes a melody. It's fine. Now we're on A3, dotted quaver. I don't know if this is right or not, but we've got this next part of the phrase and I'm going to work with it. That's just the pre-compositional material. Composing is different. Composing is what you do with that. So I'm going to change the register of all these notes. I think I'm going to have this up here. I'm going to have this quite an angular melody. There's a mistake I made. Maybe in that case, I will just add a rest. You can alter quite a lot of it, actually. You can add in rests and stuff. I'm going to add an accent here and a staccato here, accent that, we're definitely going to accent this note, maybe I'm going to slow these two and then these, dun -dun. maybe this will be staccato and then that'll be like accented, and maybe these will be all accented. Dun -dun. Yeah, all accented, but this bit, I don't know. So we have our other phrase here now. We've got, move this. I think this is going to be separate, a separate phrase. So it's like I'm going to introduce a breath mark here, maybe. I think of dynamics now. Maybe this bit can go back to being maybe MF, a bit quieter than before. Maybe loud here. Quiet maybe here? So you would diminuendo here, get to a nice loud high note here. Maybe I get quiet here, or maybe this note here is louder than the last one without a crescendo. And then we back to MF here. Then we crescendo up to here, but we very loud maybe. Like 
No, oh, maybe we'd get even louder here. And here is like F, F, but then we get back down to F here because it's like a bit of respite and then loud again. And then we crescendo at the end here. Maybe actually it's also a staccatissimo, it's like an accented staccatissimo. And here we have our sketch. It's scoring C. an avant-garde melody going on there. I think what I would do if I was composing with this, which I might do in another video, is like maybe take this melody and repeat it and we can add things to it. Maybe we can do some retrograde on it. Add some, maybe some other chords or something with another instrument. I don't know. I'll think about it because I quite like the way this melody sounded, like it had its own antecedent and consequent in it. It's kind of like this B and this F sharp kind of go together. It's almost like it's got this inbuilt cadence because you've got B and F sharp and they're like a fifth apart. I don't know. This is just thing there's this vibe going on with it so this has been the first video on composing compose with me i don't know what to call them and we had a look at magic square and we composed a little clarinet sketch which is an avant-garde tune it's okay in terms of the melody line it's it's okay it's a very cliched avant-garde tune i think i personally aren't vibing with it i'd want to do something else maybe in the next video we can look at structure or something so thank you i'll uh see you in the next video <laughs>